spin the crank around, get the piston pushed up. Oh. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to Muscle Mini Bike Builds. We're continuing with our hot tilly build up, trying to get 20 horsepower out of this motor. So we got everything we need here, all our tools are laid out. Like any good surgeon, you gotta have your tools, right? Get this motor completely torn down to uh, bare block, pull parts out of it, crank, rod, piston, head, disassemble everything, lay it all out. We're gonna take some measurements, measure how far the piston's in the hole before we change it, and then after we change it, and just go through that kind of stuff for the buildup. Like to see about 18 to 20 horsepower out of this motor. Let's see if we can make it happen. Follow along. Here we go. I'll be back. As you can see, we're coming along pretty good in the teardown. We got it down basically to the short block. Rotating assembly still in it, side cover still on it, flywheel still on it. Reason I'm at this point is I want to measure now piston depth and see how much the piston is in the hole. Okay, when we talk about in the hole, and you hear that term a lot, basically what that is is telling you how far the piston is below the deck of the block. So they don't come from the factory as a zero deck block. They do come anywhere from 10 to 25 thousandths in the hole. I've seen some of these motors. There's a lot of there's a lot of tolerances with these things that don't really match up. That's why it's always good to measure. This one here so far, if you look at it real close, this thing is really close to almost a zero deck, which I'm pretty impressed with. Now, this piston is going to get changed out. Uh, this has got a dish piston in it. It's going to get a flat top piston in it. Between that and the 65 thousandths we took off the head, we're shooting around, shooting for about 14 to 1 compression ratio, 13.5 to 14 to 1 compression ratio. We should be right there. 
But this, this piston is, is pretty flat to the deck. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure the piston depth in the hole. And how I do it is basically a reverse measure. I take my calipers, I open them up just a little bit, get that tip to stick out, as you can see right there, okay? Put it on the block flush. I bring the piston up until it touches it, all the way up, and then let it go all the way back down. And as you can see, you probably can't see in the picture, but it is sticking out just a hair. I lock it down, I turn it on, and I zero it out. But it's technically not zero. If you look, now it's zero, right? But there is technically a little bit of a gap in there. Loosen the lock, close it up, now it's zeroed out. It's 13... Hold on, let me stop moving it. It's 12.9, call it 13 thousandths in the hole. Now I'm going to do a second measure just to see what I come up with. Got it opened up a little bit. I'm going to sit it on the block. Bring the piston up. Bring the piston down. Got a little bit of a gap in there. Lock it. Turn it on. Zero it out. Unlock it. Close it. We're right around the same, 12 13 thousandths. So this thing's 12 13 thousandths in the hole. Let's see if we can get this off in one shot. Put a little pry bar behind it. Put the nut on it to save it. Give it a little tap. There we go. One shot. Back the nut off. Boom. Flywheel's off. Just like that. Now you can see it's almost completely apart. Just got to take the rear cover off. Get the crank, piston, rod, cam out of it. And we're basically down to a bare block and then remove the governor. There's always some oil in these motors when you take them apart. All the bolts are out. I always like to tilt them forward. Give a little, oh, this one came, comes off nice and easily. Pull it up. And if you look inside, you can see there's a small puddle of oil. And that's because they do test run these things, I think, real briefly when they assemble them. Now at this point, we can go ahead and pull the cam out. Stock camshaft, lifters, of course always one falls out and you have to catch it, okay? Now to get the crank out, got to disconnect the connecting rod. So let's get that cracked loose. Once we get that out, then we're going to do a governor removal on it, and we'll go through and show some of the details on the inside of the motor. Rod bolts are 10 millimeter. I got this really neat. 3 8 and quarter inch drive double ended ratchet. I actually bought it at Harbor Freight a long time ago. But it works really good because it's thin and it's got some length on the handle and you can get in on any one of these rods without having a big ratchet head in there. Crack it loose. And take the bolts out and pull the bearing cap off. Rod bolt. Spin the crank around. Get the piston pushed up. At this point now, light little pull. Out comes the crank. This is what you want to be careful with. You don't want to have anything happen to this rod journal right in there. This motor's never been run. This is all brand new. And it's actually a nice looking piece when you look at it up close. This is the drive for the governor. This I'm actually going to knock off because we're not going to use it. If you look inside there, there's the governor and the governor arm. That's all going to be coming out. All right, at this point, block is bare. You can see all we got left is the bearing, the governor arm, 
and the governor itself, which is basically a plastic gear that runs off the crank that has a set of weights in it that springs out, and as it springs out, it, it takes this rod and pushes the rod to force the throttle backwards to slow it down, so to govern the speed and keep it around 36, 3700 RPM out of the, out of the box. We're going to be removing this. Now, a lot of guys will just sit here and pry and pick and take the clip off. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of guys will sit here and pry and pick and take this whole thing apart just to get that clip off and remove it. I go a little bit easier and a little different route. I, I don't like to have anything inside the motor. So basically, this is, what, this is how I do it. Turn it upside down. If you see, there's the governor shaft right there that's pressed into the block. Use a punch, a little lump hammer, a couple taps. That's it. It's out. Turn it over. There's your whole governor assembly. Plastic gear with swing out weights, shaft, collar, shim washer. And there you go. Now you see the governor is completely out. But there's a shim washer in there, and they do that when they manufacture these motors to set the clearance on that governor gear. And a lot of guys will take the governor gear off, get rid of the plastic part, leave the shaft, and forget about that washer that's in there sometimes. Take a magnet, pull it off, take it out. You don't want, you don't want that thing bouncing around inside the motor after you put it all back together. So that's basically stripped out right here. Take a pair of pliers, pull off this clip. Governor rod comes out, give it a little wiggle. And that too has a shim washer in it. Got to make sure you get that out. And now you can see the governor rod and washer. Make sure there's nothing else up in there, which there isn't, just some assembly lube from when they built the motor. And I think they do that to hold the washer in place when they're building it on the assembly line. And that's it. So now it's basically bare. Well, what do you do with the holes? A lot of guys put nuts and bolts in them. I like to use a quarter twenty by half inch bolt with a copper washer and some Loctite and I run them in with the zip gun. It will self thread into the block, seals, and it will never come back out. This hole here you can do the same with but I'm going to tap this and put a fitting on it for a breather and feed that up to the valve covers so it will splash lubricate the top of the valve train. So that we're going to tap later on. In the meantime, we'll close this up, and I'll show you how I do it. Here's how I, cl here's how I close up the governor hole. Quarter 20 by half inch length bolt, 7 16 head, copper sealing washer, buy a pack of these at Harbor Freight. Use them all the time. I use them for everything else too. Oil pan, get oil pan drain plugs, stuff like that. And some Loctite. Take the Loctite. Give us a little drop. That, like I said, that thread will self-cut into this aluminum casing. Get that started halfway. A little zip gun and send her home. I don't like to bottom it out completely with the impact because you can't see it. I like to do the last quarter turn by hand. Check the washer. Give it another snug down. That's it. It's done. Now, that washer will seal it from the, from the bolt to the block. And if you look on the inside, you can see it just barely sticks through and it's held in with Loctite. It's going nowhere. I've never had one come out. What I do like about this Tillotson block, and we haven't discussed it yet, is all the extra webbing you see throughout the block, the extra casting in here. A lot of people have talked about it and discussed it, but this is the first time I've had one apart myself in my shop, and I'm really impressed the way the block is manufactured, plus all the heavy webbing up underneath the block. What they don't have is they don't have a low oil sensor, which would normally be in here. So that's one less hole you have to plug. So that's kind of nice. But Overall, my opinion, it's a great piece, well built, good step up from the Predators. Price-wise, you really can't beat it. It's only a few bucks more, and it's going to be a good baseline for a performance engine. 
let's go on from here and see what we can get done next. Well, here you go. Motor's completely taken apart, right down to the bare block. Cylinder head, fuel system, fuel tank, ignition system, rod, piston, crank, valves. Everything's out of it. Lifters, flywheel. So now, next episode, we're going we're gonna to remeasure everything, put it all back together. We're going to have the new ported cylinder head going on it. And that's it. So I hope you follow along. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, the notification button. Don't forget to hit the likes. Look for everything we're doing in the description below. And follow along for the next episode where we'll be putting it back together with all the new hop-up parts for the new Hot Tilly 20 horsepower build. See you next time.